Bill Heard from Hackaday. Today we're going to be doing uh, analog computing. Uh, this is not the math to do analog. It is using analog to do the math. So uh, I'm going to use my little breadboard here to uh, do some addition, some division, maybe some square roots, maybe some multiplication. And if we have time, uh, we'll show an application. Maybe we'll get involved with uh, balanced ring modulators and things like that, which are multiplication of, of an audio signal. So, but first let's get started. Uh, let's look at just adding some numbers together and summing. And we all know about op amps and that's what they do. So we'll, we're going to flip right on through that part. Here's my uh, little analog breadboard setup, And I, I make little small PC boards when I want to do analog or even some digital. Uh, I, I, instead of trying to do the solderless breadboards. Uh, partially for layout purposes. But also then that gives me the opportunity I can put the formulas right on there and the picture of what it looks like and hopefully get a better intuitive feel of what's going on. So in this case, we're looking at an inverting summing amplifier, summing, you know, addition. So that's our block diagram for the invert, invert summing amplifier. And uh, again, I'm not going to go through the, the, the math of it, but what you're doing is you're looking for ratios. So in this case, you've got the ratio of the inputs to the output. If you look on the, uh, on the drawing there, you'll see those. Um, and the answer will be a negative number. So if I want to do addition using this, I would dial in 3 volts. There's an adjustment here. And for the second one, for example, I would dial in 0.5. And then I would get my answer. So right now it's at 3.01 plus 0.5, and the answer is 3.51. I can also use it to <clears throat> solve subtraction if I take this value here and I change this number here, I'll read the answer on the one below it. So, and, and so I'm just using the voltmeters as a digital display of the voltage. We actually can all, uh, do this without displays if we use calibrated vernier knobs like this one. And this is a 10 turn pot with a, a vernier knob on it. So, and, or, or you could use a regular knob and just have a big graph around it, almost like the old RF generators, how they had all the scales around it. So now this does addition, as you might think doing this. And um, while I'm adjusting this, you'll notice there's not a lot of crosstalk. The 0.5 is staying pretty stable. And if we bring up the block diagram for this, we see that uh, this is an inverting summing. And right here is a virtual ground. And uh, what that means is that the three inputs have a, have a very little crosstalk because they're isolated. They have to go through ground to get to the other one. And so this is a good way to do a summing amplifier to, uh, to reduce crosstalk, and you would use this for audio and the like. Well, what do we mean by a virtual ground? Well, this pin, the input pin, is at a ground reference, but there's no current flowing into the pin, if you can dig it. The, the theory is that the amount of current entering the pin, or entering the node, and exiting are equal. So there's a sum of zero, and that's a virtual ground. Huh? What's that mean? Well, picture two people about to kick a soccer ball. Uh, and they kick it right at the exact same time, right from two different sides. And they boom, they kick it, and it doesn't move because they had equal and opposite current flows or, or the amount of uh, energy that their leg imparted to it. And if you were an observer, it looked to you like the soccer ball was rooted in the ground, like stuck to the ground because both guys kicked it and didn't get anywhere. Well, it's the same thing here. It looks like ground, it, it acts like ground, but there's no current flow to ground. And I, I believe this was also called superposition uh, in, the, in the math part of it. But this is a good, uh, uh, good way to do your summing amplifier. And let's look at the alternative of a uh, non-inverting summing amplifier. I've swapped out the inverting sum summing amplifier and put in its place a uh, non-inverting summing amplifier. And it looks like this. Uh, it, the, the inputs are now going into the non-inverting input, as you can see here. It would look something like this. And the first thing you will notice as I go to adjust the voltage now in this is that there's crosstalk going on. The voltages are, are interacting with each other. And that's, that's uh, because of the, the way the summing amplifier works. I, in this case, the, there is no virtual ground. This is a high input impedance into the op amp. And so this signal can see this signal 
in this case 2k away, 2,000 ohms away, and it didn't stop at ground first. So I didn't need my little uh, inverting amplifier on the follow-up here to make the display work correctly. Before when it was inverting it would have been a negative number so I put it through another inverting just to bring it back for the digital. So we just showed uh, how to add and uh, we can also do something else. I'm just going to tell you about it, uh, but we can also determine average. Uh, as you saw in those amplifiers, there's a certain amount of gain. Well, if we change the gain, if we say, oh, there's three inputs, divide the total by three, now I've got an averaging circuit. So with just an, an op amp and uh, some inputs, now I can do addition and averaging. Well, you can also multiply if you really want to know. And that is uh, the way we used to multiply with logarithms, with slide rule. And uh, basically what it is, is the addition of two logarithms is the same as multiplying uh, in, in normal decimal format. So we could have, uh, if we were using the knobs, we could have the knobs be calibrated in logarithms. You, you could photocopy the slide rule and uh, Photoshop it into a curve and then it could be the, the, the legend around a knob, for example. So let's move on and talk about some other things we can do with analog computation. I just plugged in my multiplier, the AD633, and it actually came right up. Let me show you what we're looking at here. So I've added uh, this stage up here, and this is the 633. It's a four-quadrant multiplier, but we only use two of the inputs for it. And it took two volts and two volts, and they're, you know, they're flickering around a little bit, and came up with four volts. Actually, it came up with 0.4 volts, so I routed it through this channel. I changed one resistor to make a, a gain of 10, and now I can read it as 4 volts. So it's been normalized back to, or scaled back to, uh, you know, this unitless value, whatever we're working with here. As I mentioned before, the device we're using is an analog device, is 633, and it's a cool little chip. Uh, it takes care of all the uh, uh, trimming, trimming of the log of the resistors and getting into the dynamic range of the logarithmic. Uh, part of the nonlinear part so that uh, we can use it. You know, I've had this thing up to nine volts. It actually got a little uh, uh, got a little off in doing so. Considering the wires are laying all over, that wasn't bad. Uh, so easy to use part. If we look in the center, there's a, a multiplication going on in the center and two amp amps feeding it, uh, which uh, right now I've got the uh, negative inputs tied to ground. Uh, I actually an artificial ground in between the two power rails. Uh, but you could use as a differential into it. And you see it's got a buffered output and then the Z output, which is so you can sum in an offset. So let's say, oh, that's great, but I want the answer to be a minimum of 2 volts. You would give it an offset of 2 volts on its Z pin. So, well, this was a DC test, direct current test. Uh, the, what I'd like to do is show you some AC applications of this. So, uh, you know, let's see what we can do with a little bit of frequency. So let me tear down again and uh, show you that. Here we are with the final circuit for uh, this week's video. Um, we've now crossed from doing things with DC, direct current, into things with AC, alternating current, or in this case, an audio tone. And so what I have is I've got my little uh, inner sill. It's obsolete now. You have to get them off eBay. 8038. It's a function generator. It does uh, sine, triangle, and square wave all in one package. It's very cool. And, uh, and also then I've built a little keyboard uh, PCB for it so that you can have like a little organ here. And um, so here's the AD633. Here's the tone generator. Here's the keyboard for it. And so now let's show you. And, and that's the waveform what it looks like. And what you're seeing there is just, just the, something mimicking the attack, sustain, decay, uh, delay, release of, say, a synthesizer. But if we give it a tone, you'll see that it actually starts to now um, modulate that. So we're, we're amplitude modulating this, or in other words, we're, we are creating a voltage-controlled gain block, or we can do things like automatic gain control using the multiplier. So we're, now we're starting to branch out into applications uh, more than just uh, uh, you know doing some on the bench computation for fun. I'm going to stop there for this video and I'm going to go into a, the AC fundamentals of 
the uh, multiplier uh, next time. So with a, an analog multiplier, uh, I can do things like amplitude modulate uh, a signal, radio signal. I can do uh, the volume modulation. I can do a voltage controlled amplifier. And uh, with my little keypad here and my little oscillator, got the beginnings of an analog uh, uh, synthesizer here. So, uh, and it also does one other thing, and I was nuts about this in the 70s. The, what was known as the ring oscillator or balance modulator uh, was one of the few nonlinear components we had. Remember, everything was monotonic. We just had one tone. Uh, if you heard more than one tone back then, it was either the guy's playing multiple keyboards, like Keith Emerson, or he was playing an organ, again, like Keith Emerson. But uh, one of the things we could do was we could multiply a couple signals together and we'd get like a gong sound, or, or if you did it just right, it'd sound kind of like a honky-tonk piano or something. So we'll get into the AC fundamentals of, of, of multipliers uh, next time. So I hope you caught on while I was talking about with uh, analog computation, computing with analog. Like I said, uh, it, it came first long before the, uh, the digital calculators. So uh, Bill Hurd on behalf of Hackaday, see you around.